Hey there, it's Rich from Newbie Prepping. Seeing the way the world is nowadays makes me believe being prepared is more and more important each day, and a lot of other people are starting to think the same. So if you're a newbie prepper that's maybe looking into what sort of bag they want to get, then this might be the perfect video for you. There's going to be a lot of bags to choose from, from the ultra military style bags to the really well-made and rugged hiking bags from super cheap to super expensive but I prefer to go for the ones in the middle they sort of hit that nice ground of having well-made materials and the bag being well-made itself while not breaking the bank my main three survival bags are all from Combat UK that's pretty much a happy accident I'm not like particularly devoted to that one company uh, I just genuinely think that they are well built for the price which is relatively low when you look at other bags Obviously the more expensive ones are going to be better and for some people it might be worth going straight to them or upgrading to them later on. If you want a recommendation for a higher priced bag then there's this one bag that a bushcrafter I know uh, called Alan Bolger on uh, Facebook uses. Uh, it's the Berghaus Crusader 3 90 plus 20. Uh, it's lasted them for decades apparently and it's around £300 but uh, I've seen it on sale a couple of times, 10% uh, off that sort of thing. Uh, so you've got to shop around and uh, not go for the first one that you find because you might find it cheaper elsewhere. But yeah, that's an example of a more expensive one if you really wanted to go for that straight away. There's a general school of thought when it comes to bags for prepping. There's going to be your get home bag, your bug out bag, and your inch bag. But they're basically all different schools of thought for survival bags. They're pretty much going to be quite similar anyway. So I'm going to show you which bags I've got and which ones I actively use for going out and bushcrafting and stuff, uh, practicing for whenever an SHTF scenario might happen. So here we go. So this is what I use as my get home bag. It's my Combat UK tactical assault bag. Or, I don't know, whatever. Again, this is one of those sort of military style bags that like they throw in all the buzzwords tactical assault and all that but honestly I don't care about any of that I just like how quite simple it is uh, but at the same time it holds a lot as well um, some people who've seen the channel before might realize that I actually used to use this as my um, bug up bag uh, and uh, have taken it on a few uh, overnighters as well Pretty decent bag, uh, lots of molly pouches on it and it's got these straps here as well that you can uh, slot things into and it'll hold onto it rather nicely. Great sort of bag for um, a get home bag because it's no frills, it's literally just two compartments here and then one big compartment in the back. It doesn't open all the way up, uh, but yeah, it's a real nice bag just uh, to hold all the stuff that you need to get home with basically if you're stranded somewhere. Alright, so this is what I now use as my bug out bag. This is the Combat UK Viking Patrol Pack. Again, with the buzzwords. And uh, I, no, I didn't just get this because it has the word Viking in it. Uh, this is 65 litres and it's got a lot of room in it. In my opinion, that makes it uh, perfect for a bug out bag. Um, uh, any bigger and you're kind of going into inch territory. Um, I'll explain that a bit later. Um, there's lots of places to put stuff in this uh, compartment on the front compartment uh, just in the middle here nice big massive compartment that opens all the way down uh, even a, a nice little compartment here and then obviously sewn on uh, are two um, pockets to either side the reason why I like that so much and the reason why I specified that these are sewn on um, is because, as great as these mollies are, I prefer having stuff that's actually attached to the bag itself because um, when you're tying stuff on to mollies, eventually they will um, degrade over time. Like uh, Even though the stitching is really, really good on these bags, with weight attached to them, eventually they are going to start to loosen. Like That is just something that's going to happen. Um, so. I'd rather save the mollies for carrying like lighter stuff and have these pouches sewn onto the bag uh, so that I can be sure that they're actually, you know, affixed to it and, you know, it's not going to come off easily or uh, fray over time, you know. You know, you know, you know. <laughs> okay, so this right here is what I've been using as my inch bag. Inch stands for I'm never coming home. 
uh, that's like the American term for it. There is an English term as well, uh, which I can't remember, it's something like never going back, um, NGB or something like that. Uh, I prefer inch. Of course, 120 liter, you're getting a lot of room uh, for your money. This one has um, a pocket on the front that is attached, uh, which, as I said before, I liked. Uh, but it's these two pouches on the sides, um, they are connected by zips, uh, which you can just unzip and you can take them off and you can use them as uh, their own bag or like uh, connect these two side pouches together to make uh, a nice little 20 litre bag I think it is. This is what I was talking about when I was saying about uh, not being too expensive but still having like really good materials. Uh, this one costed 130 I do believe. Uh, you might find it cheaper elsewhere at this time. Feels really solid. Due to the size being 120 litre, it's got an aluminium frame in the back there and it's got uh, this style of strap here, which you would normally see on hiking bags. Uh, and then even a little waist strap here. And lots of space going all the way up, just a nice big bucket just to chuck everything into and then even more on the sides. And this is pretty much the part where I break up with Combat UK because um, the weakness that I'm about to describe on this is pretty much what uh, kills it for me for this bag. I don't like how uh, the hiking style straps that you've got here, uh, they kind of seem flimsy and like almost hastily put on. There's only one line of stitching at the top here uh, connecting uh, these uh, straps here, like these two particular straps. What I was talking about before about um, uh, a bag needing to have really solid stitching that is definitely going to last a long time. Um, because uh, you're carrying um, enough weight that will go into a 120 litre bag, what ends up happening is these straps here are basically the things that end up holding all of that weight. Because it's not this, it's not this part, it's not this part of the straps, it's these things here. What I thought would be better is if they stitched it all the way down. Even if this part here splits and breaks off, then at least this going down here, if it was stitched all the way down, uh, then you would have multiple lines of protection, you know? Because it doesn't have the stitching going all the way down, if this one top line of stitching here fails, then that means that this strap effectively becomes useless and uh, the entire weight of the bag is being held up uh, from essentially the, like quite far down the bag. You could wear the bag like that, but the problem is, is that the bag would then sloop really far out away from your back uh, because, as you can see, the only thing holding it in uh, towards your back are these two small straps here. Um, so yeah, that becomes a major issue um, if this stitching ever does fail. Another slight issue with the straps as well is that they're really short here. So of course because this is the main contact point, so uh, where the strap initially starts, um, it's very small. Um, I'm quite broad-shouldered, um, not sure if you can tell on the camera, uh, but this only pretty much comes up comes up to here, like it just manages to get over my shoulder. That's why I've had to tie these off and have them really far up high uh, just to make sure that the strap actually comes over my shoulder so uh, it's just not ideal uh, for me in that regard as well. It's got the mollies on the front, yeah perfect. Um, what I want to have as well is uh, mollies on the bottom because uh, even though this bag is full here it doesn't have my sleeping bag in it so I have to have my sleeping bag off in a uh, waterproof bag and attach it um, uh, even though I said before that I don't like attaching stuff to my bag. It's only a sleeping bag anyway, it's super light, so it's not exactly going to cause a lot of stress on the seams. But the thing is, is uh, this bag doesn't have any molly straps on the bottom. It has literally just one carrying handle. Just strapping it to this, uh, it would just cause it to go flopping around and uh, because it wouldn't be so secure, because that's such a wide area. If I did strap my sleeping bag to it, like, uh, uh, and it's horizontal, then it could end up just kind of sliding vertical and then just start hanging off the bottom. Um, yeah, it's just be too annoying to deal with and I'm quite disappointed that there's not any mollies under here as well. Another big issue with this bag is 
not really the bag itself, it's what it encourages. Because it's 120 litre, uh, you just want to chuck as much stuff in there as you can. The problem is, is that like, it makes it, it does make it super heavy. Um, and even if you're a super strong weightlifter, um, in an SHTF scenario, um, you're not going to have access to uh, protein shakes and uh, uh, boiled rice and chicken 24-7. Um, um, you're going to want to conserve your energy. Uh, and lifting a big heavy bag like this probably won't be ideal. Uh, but then again, on the flip side of that, this is an inch bag. So um, your real uses for this sort of bag would be um, to carry everything. Yes, uh, and it will be heavy, but it will be one trip of you just carrying all of your stuff, getting to your bug out area and um, pretty much retiring after that and uh, for any foraging or going out looking for stuff that you need to do you can use like a smaller bag uh, this is essentially just like a homestead in a bag essentially um, and then you use your other smaller bags to go and do uh, other stuff other jobs and stuff like that so for some people this might be the perfect sort of bag uh, but for me with the issues with the straps and the fact that it holds 120 liters which just encourages holding too much, um, I've decided to steer it away from this bag and go for a different one instead. Okay, so this is the one that I've decided to go for to replace the Combat UK 120 litre bag. Uh, this is uh, the Snug Pack Bergen. Uh, Snug Pack, uh, of course, quite famous for making the uh, Snug Pack Stratosphere bivy bag. Um, really famous bivy bag used by quite a lot of bushcrafters and Wild campers. This is the 100 litre Bergen. So the reason why I went with this 100 litre bag instead of uh, any other 100 litre or 120 litre bag is purely because of the straps. Look at how long the straps are. Uh, I've put this on and the straps easily come down to about here on me, whereas the Combat UK ones came up to about here. They are far more comfortable as well. And the beauty of it is, is uh, they actually do have a similar system um, as the Combat UK 120 litre bag. The weight bearing will be mainly done by this smaller strap here, uh, but even if that did fail, the main strap itself is actually connected to the bag properly uh, up here. So essentially that means that the issue that I spoke about with the Combat UK 120 litre bag is non-void because no matter what, even if these small straps fail, the big strap themselves are going to take the weight and I'm going to be able to wear the bag properly. It's not going to end up drooping all the way back. It's going to stay flush with my back at all times. And see, that is something that I really want to get across with this series is buying something that you can be sure is going to last the test of time. Because as I said in the previous episode, you don't know how long a bug out scenario is going to be. So you need your equipment to not just look good on the surface, you need to know that it's been made well and ergonomically and in a way that is not just going to break down and uh, fall apart. Um, and uh, I will say uh, the Combat UK 120 litre, um, even the way that it's built, uh, I'm sure that there are people out there who have used it for years and years and they swear by it. But if I went along with what those people said and just disregarded the issue with the straps, um, it would be all about comfort for me and I just do not find that bag that comfortable whereas this bag has already proven to be super comfortable. All of that said about the Snug Pack Bergen, um, I will say uh, it is still relatively new to me um, uh, but it does have uh, the same sort of side pouches on each side uh, that you can take off with zips, um, uh, unzip them and take them off. Uh, it's got uh, no mollies on it um, on the front uh, but there are uh, straps where you can slot uh, stuff into, like uh, hiking poles or axes and stuff like that. So it may not have any mollies on the front, but the issue that I had with the mollies on the previous bag uh, is sorted because we've got loads of mollies under here. Uh, you could easily attach a sleeping bag to this. That problem that I uh, described before with the uh, sleeping bag kind of slipping and then like dangling won't happen. So yeah, perfect. Uh, really happy with that. So yeah, the Snugpack Bergen. Again, Snugpack are a very trusted company. 
uh, very uh, high quality products. It's something that I would recommend uh, to people as well because uh, uh, this was more expensive than uh, the uh, Combat UK 120 litres. This was £160. I say anything for this quality that's under the £200 mark is very decently priced. So if you can find this one, uh, this bag, then I would thoroughly recommend this for your inch bag. Uh, it's going to carry all you need. It's not going to encourage you to carry far too much and then break your back. But it's also going to be super comfortable as well and versatile because you, again you can take off the side pouches, make another smaller bag with that. Perfect, I'm really happy with this one. Snug Pack Bergen. Snug Pack Bergen, 100 litre. So I do want to talk about hiking bags here. Uh, this hiking bag uh, is a 60 plus 10. 70 litres in total, um, 60 in the main compartment, and then 10 litres in the outside pockets. Uh, it's not currently full and uh, kind of saggy at the moment, so you're not getting a full picture of it, but hey, you've seen one hiking bag, you've pretty much seen them all. Uh, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because for a prepping. A hiking bag could very well be something that you could go towards. These bags are designed to carry a lot of stuff and to go far with that stuff. I've been to tons of festivals where I've done a lot of walking, carried a lot of stuff, a lot of beer, <laughs> um, and it is still in perfect condition um, and I thoroughly, uh, if SHTF ever happened, I would be bringing this bag with me um, even though it's got nothing in it at the moment because I know that it could carry a lot of stuff. It also helps with the prospect of Grey Man as well. Grey Man is the prospect of going unnoticed within crowds so having all of your stuff on you in like a, a very non-conspicuous bag and having uh, very non-conspicuous clothing um, in order to bug out from like a big city or a built up area, basically just blend in with the crowd where uh, you have to hide in plain sight essentially um, uh, and uh, use that advantage uh, to get out of wherever you are in. The problem with these military style bags is uh, uh, if you're walking around in like a city or a built up area then people will see you with your military bag on uh, say after uh, shit has hit the fan um, and they'd probably be more likely to go after you because they might think, oh my god, he's got all this military equipment. Uh, whereas um, a hiking bag, um, it's a little less conspicuous. People might still see the big bag and think, he's got a big bag of stuff. Uh, but they would be less likely to think, like, oh, you're stacked to the nines. They could just think, oh, it's, it's just full of clothes or, like, um, full of, you know, personal possessions and uh, sentimental value and all that. You never know. Uh, it just goes to help with the whole grey man thing um, a lot more. So even though I've never really had to worry about the whole grey man thing, if you're watching this from a built up city or a town uh, or just any built up area uh, and you think uh, that you might be accosted by people uh, if you're wearing military stuff, might just be better getting one of these hiking bags, holds a lot of stuff and uh, is comfortable as well so you'll be able to walk very far with it or just, you know, get to your bug out area um, uh, without, you know, having hurting shoulders at the end of it. Hurting shoulders and a bad back. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, hiking bags. Don't discount them. Just for a bit of fun, I thought that we might go through the two bags that I bought when I first started prepping. Um, they are the quintessential uh, newbie items. I went on to Wish and I bought them from there. Extremely cheap and hey, Let's just have a look at them. So even though I was kind of poking fun about the whole thing, I will say that I do quite like this bag. It does have a special place in my heart. It was my first bug out bag. Um, that changed rather quickly. Um, and I even had it as my get home bag for a while, which uh, some viewers might have already seen uh, on our channel. So the bag actually genuinely does hold quite a bit of stuff. Um, it holds everything that I've got in my current get home bag. The only problem with it was I, I probably would have kept it because it is quite small and therefore everything is compact and like it just stays quite light. I would have kept it, but again the straps, the, the strap, I cannot tell you. When you're looking into buying a bag you have to look into the straps. These things, right, so they are literally just small straps like held on uh, by these two D-rings and you get this much padding. When wearing this, this part didn't really dig into my shoulders. Uh, for someone else it might, but because of me being such broad-shouldered, um, this was halfway down my back and this is what was on my shoulder. 
Um, but the problem is, is because the bag is so small and my back is so wide, uh, it ended up just being really stretched out like that. And uh, it was like I was wearing a girdle or one of those things that like adjusts your posture, you know? That is an issue for this sort of bag because there are this size bags out there that have decent straps where like the strap is actually attached to the top here um, uh, in that same sort of way as the snug pack bag. It was like eight pound or something like that off of Wish. Um, and to be fair, the stitching has seemed pretty okay. Uh, there are some top, tough mollies on here. Uh, some of the stitching is actually pretty good on the mollies. And yeah, um, I honestly thought that the straps would come apart. But again, there's a lot of stitching up here too. Honestly, quite pleased with the bag as it is. But the thing is, is that because it's such cheaply made and bought for such a low price, you just don't know when the stitching is going to give out. Like, uh, common problems I would have wearing bags all the time when I was back in school uh, would be um, this part here, the bottom part here, uh, would always come apart first. And if that comes apart, if, uh, if these straps come off at the bottom, then it doesn't matter how good uh, the bag is, how well made it is in the front, how much it holds, because you can't use it as a bag if this stuff comes off here. And I've already seen here that there are a few stray threads um, and uh, the double stitching doesn't really exist down here as well. You just have to be careful. Uh, if you do want to start uh, your you know, prepping journey or survival survivalism enthusiasm journey uh, by buying one of these, then it might not be too bad because it will carry your stuff at least for a little while, unless you get really bad luck. And this is the second bag that I bought from Wish. Um, it's a 70 litre bag. Uh, um, I initially planned for this to be my inch bag and the black one to be my bug out bag. Uh, needless to say, it didn't stay like that for a very long time. Um, the stitching is very bad on it. Uh, these here on the front may look like mollies, but they are certainly not. They are just straps, which are just strewn across here. And they've got literally one line of stitching just zigzagging down. Um, and in a previous video, I actually said about how I had a med kit stashed on here and um, it uh, yanked the uh, stitching off of here. This is where my notion of not wanting to attach things to the mollies came from uh, and uh, where I became kind of hyper aware, hyper sensitive about uh, the stitching quality uh, because when I discovered uh, this, I was like thinking to myself, it's like a ticking time bomb, you never know when it is just going to fall apart. I will say, the material, it is quite hard, quite tough, um, and I've taken it out in the rain and it has been decent in that regard, fair play to it. There are a few gripes I have about it, um, for instance, if you do this thing up here and then uh, put that clasp up there, um, it just still comes open really easily. And the problem is as well, is that like the elastic here is too tight. Um, so even if you put it around the top, it kind of like bounces back and leaves some of this exposed. So again, it's not really waterproof in that regard because it doesn't stay closed. Of course, you could just get a new one of these, but when you buy a bag, you don't want to be, you know, having to work on it yourself. But apart from that, I will say, um, yes, uh, it does have a pretty decent amount of uh, storage. Um, the bag on the inside, um, it's, I think it's made to look like it's a waterproof material, but it's not. Because um, uh, a lot of bags have like uh, built-in liners that are, that are waterproof, and this isn't waterproof. Not at all. It just looks like it is, and that's something that they can add to the advertising listing. Oh, waterproof bag inside. Uh, just make newbies want to buy it, and yeah, it, it's not actually waterproof now. But to be fair to it, if you are a newbie, if you are a beginner, um, and you are just getting started, then, and you really, really don't want to break the bank, you're, you're really not sure uh, that you want to commit £160 to a bag, 
then this might be decent for you because it does have quite a lot of space. I mean, like I said, it is 70 liter. Uh, it's got this like handy pouch on the front. Been looking for that for months. Um, yeah, uh, the front bag, uh, uh, the, the front uh, pocket does have quite a lot of space as well. Um, these ones, they're kind of annoying to get into, but they do carry stuff. I mean, they do hold stuff. And then this right here, a small pocket on the front that maybe you could put like a fire kit in or something. Yeah, it's all right, it's all right. Uh, on the bottom though, there are no mollies, so you can't attach anything to the bottom. Um, in fact, like, these are not mollies, so when I say this, believe it, there are no mollies around the whole thing, so there is no chance of attaching anything to it, uh, even even though I say that I don't really like attaching stuff to mollies, um, you might. Uh, you might like attaching stuff to mollies. These straps here, uh, again, in the advertising listing, uh, they are there to essentially just lure you in and make you think that maybe you can hold something there. Uh, but if this pocket is full, which it should be because you're carrying stuff, um, nothing will go in here. I mean, you might get uh, hiking poles in there, or like I got happen to have a camping stool here, and you'll get that in there. And I mean, they are long enough to hold something like this with stuff that's in the uh, pocket already, but. When you're thinking about wanting to carry your sleeping bag or your tent that might be too big to go in your bag, they're just not ideal. Uh, there's not a lot of stuff to really hold in here. It just looks like it's designed to hold something, but it just really doesn't, and it annoyed me. <laughs> Overall, like, if you are just beginning prepping, uh, beginning bushcraft, beginning any sort of survivalism, enthusiasm, uh, this might be alright for you. I think this was about £15 from Wish I bought it for, uh, maybe even less. If you don't want to commit, then that could be alright for you. But hey, there we go. Alrighty, I'm going to finish that off there. Thank you very much for watching. If you're a newbie, hopefully that this has helped you decide what bags you want for your uh, three styles of survival preparedness bag. Uh, if you could, like, favourite and subscribe and hit the bell icon, it would very much help the channel. Uh, thank you very much for that if you do. Uh, and tell me, uh, which bags do you think were awesome pieces of kit and which ones were just absolute loads of shit?